Hi, my name is Mackenzie Barnett. Peter Andre. Lori Stallbridge. Michael Sigan. David Santo. The Evening Home. Amanda DiBattista. Allison Blay Palmer. Michael Granzel. Irina Knazovich. Neil McLeod Farley. Charles Levko. She said yes, me. Mary Becky. Paris Ahmed. Andrea Lacerda. Michaela Bohanaki. Aaron Nelson. Andrew Springer. Fletch has been an amazing adventure. We've learned so much uh, as academics and with our community members about uh, social justice, uh, equity, uh, localized economies, and also in terms of uh, the environment and how uh, sustainable food systems can improve the environment more. Uh, it's been an opportunity to work with really amazing uh, students and watch academics grow in their careers over the last few years. It's been really wonderful. Um, and overall, uh, I think what we've taken away or what I've taken away from this is the importance of giving voice to communities uh, as they do what they need to do and how we as scholars can provide support for that. Uh, think about that in a bigger way and share the knowledge amongst ourselves and with our community partners. For me, Fledge has been an incredible opportunity to learn about sustainable food systems. So much of the work that we do is sharing resources, connecting other people, building networks and building capacity across our networks so that we can all work together to create the food systems that we want. I was very fortunate to be part of the Fledge Research Network right from the beginning because I was one of Alison Blay Palmer's PhD students. In my work at George Brown College, I'm drawing on the research of Fledge colleagues as I develop the courses for the new bachelor's degree in food studies. And in fact, I think it's fair to say that the scholars in the Fledge Network have had a big influence on my thinking about what needs to be included in a comprehensive degree in food studies. So we joined Fledge in 2017. Uh, and being part of Fledge has been a real benefit to our own research. It has enabled us to solidify our network of family farmers, um, to share knowledge across a range of stakeholders in the community, uh, and to connect to researchers and practitioners internationally that address similar challenges to those that our farmer partners are facing here in Brazil. Uh, after I left Shirk as VP Research and Partnerships, I was so thrilled when Allison invited me to get involved uh, in the project, given my food systems background. I think that was fall 2014. We've had other collaborations uh, as well over the years. But Fledge has been a wonderful opportunity, I think, uh, positioned uh, my work on food systems, which was mostly in Asia, connecting that more to what was happening in Canada and getting to know the food uh, systems and uh, food activism within academe and also outside of the academic circles here in Canada. So that's been extremely useful. And this is also when I joined the Fledge Network um, through a partnership with Dr. Marilla Strunk in the psychology department and Dr. Charles Levko in health sciences um, to sort of try to bring these two worlds together as critical food studies and critical community psychology. Uh, and this is something actually that I think is, is really special about the Fledge Network is really this interdisciplinary approach to understanding our food systems. So having this openness to look at what are some of the psychological aspects involved in the food system has really allowed me to uh, connect with others about this work and bring both my passions together for both psychology and mental health and also food. Fledge has meant so many different things to me. Um, I've worked closely with my colleague Peter Andre from political science and many, many talented grad students. Uh, we've tracked the evolution of a national food policy in Canada and sought to influence its governance. We've worked with Just Food, an amazing local uh, organization, to document its history and to better understand um, how this important organization advances a food systems lens. And we've worked with several partners to bring um, a food systems lens broadly into discussions of urban resilience. And throughout all of this, throughout all these sub-projects, um, Alison Blay Palmer, our PI, 
has had this facilitative and inclusive leadership style that ensures that we're more than the sum of our parts. And I've been part of the Fledge project since the beginning, working closely with my colleague, Dr. Patricia Balamingi. Uh, we've done a variety of projects with various community partners, including uh, a project called the Future of Farming in Hastings County, along with Louise Livingston from an organization called Harvest Hastings and many other partners in that area. Uh, we've also worked uh, closely following the process that's led to Canada's first national food policy, released in 2019, uh, both trying to see what the government was up to and what other stakeholders were up to and trying to influence the policy at the same time uh, while writing about what's happened in that process. I have been working on food systems since the early 90s because I was looking at the causes of malnutrition and realized quickly that if we needed sustainable answers to malnutrition, we need to understand the local context. I was particularly interested in the fact that in cities and in rural areas, things are very different and I started working on urban related issues. This is how I met Alison Blay Palmer and I have learned a lot through Fledge and I have also hopefully been able to bridge with other constituencies working with food systems. I was very fortunate to be a part of Fledge through a MyTax internship that focused on scaling up local food systems through institutional procurement. I think that above all, working on this project has helped me see the value of sitting down at a table with people from a variety of perspectives, sometimes quite radically different perspectives, and working towards a common goal. It's not easy and it takes a lot of time, but I was able to see how rewarding this work can be. I've been involved with the Fledge research team since before there was a Fledge project. I was a research assistant as a graduate student on a couple of projects that preceded Fledge and have been involved with this research group um, all along, um, all the way from student to associate professor now. So as you can imagine, I've grown a lot as a scholar and as a person and learned a lot about the importance of collaboration with community partners who hold a great deal of knowledge about our food systems, with scholars who come from other disciplines, other institutions, and other regions, learning together and figuring out how to find a common language and a common ground to identify what's wrong with our food systems and how to make them better has been an invaluable experience all around. I'm really proud of all the accomplishments that have come out of Fledge. Uh, we've put a finger on the pulse of really in interesting innovations in sustainable food systems happening across the country and internationally as well. But uh, I think for me the most valuable uh, part of Fledge is the relationships I've formed with people both nationally and internationally and also um, especially with some of the the people that I've worked with here in Alberta and BC, like Kent Molinix and his uh, team at uh, the Institute for Sustainable Food Systems. My involvement with Fledge was really based on a serendipitous event. I was at a symposium in Ottawa on sustainable food systems, and at the end of the day, I was standing outside. It was a rainy day, waiting for a cab, and Alison Blay Palmer happened to be standing there as well. So we shared a cab. And Allison asked if I'd be interested in, in collaborating and working together on, on some research. And I said, yes. And the rest, as they say, is history. We work with small scale producers in southern Brazil. They use traditional agroforest practices to produce erva mate. And our work is focusing on documenting and leveraging this practice and traditional knowledge to help optimize production while valuing the knowledge inherent in the systems and supporting their expansion and continuation to improve human and ecosystem well-being. My favorite memory of Fledge is when we had these agroecology schools that brought together practitioners and researchers and plant breeders and seed savers and other people working on food from different parts of the world. And we really got a chance to get our hands dirty, go out into the field. Um, and what I really enjoyed most was making organic compost together with their Latin American friends. I was elated to discover that there was a network of people whose not only research interests, but values aligned so well with my own. 
And in fact, the real bones of the Fledge partnership became the basis for my entire PhD. Specifically, the idea that research can foster community partnerships that collaboratively create research projects that are inclusive, socially just, and ecologically regenerative. I feel like I've been part of Fledge for a long time, but I actually have only just really become part of the network in the last year, uh, doing a research study on how being part of this network may have uh, influenced or changed or transformed the perspectives and the actions and the future research of the various people who've been involved. Um, indeed, I've become changed by it as well, just by interviewing 16 completely fascinating people about their experience in Fledge. I feel like I've I really had a chance to taste in some ways the, uh, the experience of being a Fledge participant, the experience of having been uh, connected to this amazing group of people for the past seven years. When I started my PhD, um, which was going to start looking at food systems in the Northwest Territories, uh, the Fledge proposal was just being finalized and submitted. And actually, that's when um, Allison wrote in the Northwest Territories note as one of the nodes of, of Fledge. Uh, it really opened the door for um, just the, to, for us to build these relationships with, with say, uh, the folks in Kakisa and the folks in Delaunay. Um, just to be there and listen and learn and really move forward with a lot of um, ideas and solutions that communities uh, in the North wanted to see. I think that one of my favorite moments working with the Fledge Research Project um, was in 2017 when I had been working at the center only for maybe six months or so, and we held our 2017 Fledge meeting. We welcomed, I want to say like 80 or 90 people from all across the country and international researchers as well. Uh, we brought everybody to Waterloo for a three-day conference and we got to, I got to hear about some of the incredible work that's happening across the network. Um, of course, it was amazing to see the range of work that was happening, but for me, I was really taken aback by how welcoming everybody was and how much they made me feel like a part of the network, even though I had only been uh, in the mix for about six months. So what's really significant about Pledge for me is that it was stumbling upon the Pledge website seeing all the amazing projects involved um, and really the principles that Fledge is based on that inspired me to come to Laurier and uh, to pursue a master's degree in the first place. Uh, as soon as I read through the website, I knew that this was the kind of research I want to be doing and the kind of people that I want to be working with. I have been a part of the Fledge team since the very beginning. Um, I was there when we found out we got the funding and I remember just how much excitement there was amongst this amazing team of people. But I think even then it would have been difficult to imagine, I know for myself, how much I was going to grow over the course of the project and I think also just how much the team was going to grow. You know, for me, I went from being a postdoctoral fellow to an assistant professor, so there Fledge has seen me through a big change in my work life. I also became a mother over the course of the project and Fledge has really always felt, I think in a lot of ways, like a part of my family. And as my life has changed, it's given me the flexibility to participate as much or as little as I could. Um, and it's just always been there. <laughs> Being a part of Fledge has supported me to do a thesis project that has gone above and beyond what I could have envisioned my work as a graduate, graduate student being. I don't know what my life looks like after graduation, especially in pandemic times, but I know it'll be building off of what has so far been an incredibly valuable learning process that actually took me to Australia for a few months last summer to collect data on how food movements are confronting settler colonialism. Fledge provided a sense of legitimacy for much of the scholar activist work we were doing and also helped to build networks that included new partners and a lot of old partners that we had been working with for some time. Moving forward, many of the projects that I worked with through Fledge have now taken on a life of their own. The Indigenous Food Circle project uh, now has its own resources and networks, um, working with a number of First Nations and Indigenous communities in the region of Northwestern Ontario, 
um, to develop indigenous food sovereignty and self-determination. The Sustainable Fisheries Project, which also started as a fledged project, which now has an Insight Development Grant uh, and an expanded uh, focus beyond just the Lake Superior region. The Food Governance Working Group has now expanded into a new project that's supported by a Social Science Humanities Research Council Insight Grant to look at food systems governance and participatory governance beyond uh, just Canada with also Australia and um, the UK. One of my greatest memories was presenting at the 2018 ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability Conference in Montreal. We were one of the few panels about food at this entire conference and we were talking about urban resilience. One particular event that stands out for me was in 2016 we held an agroecology field school and we brought partners from Cuba, Mexico, and Honduras to the Waterloo region, and we worked in collaboration with local farms and brought people together to do really on-farm learning, and really the whole spirit of the event was about learning from people and listening to them and building community, and I really think that's been key to, to Fledge over the years. So a couple of years ago, we had a book event here in Ottawa to reflect on our Nourishing Communities edited collection. And we asked one of our community partners, the multi-talented Faris Ahmed, to comment on the book. And part of his comments came in the form of a poem titled Fractured Food Systems Blues. And we actually produced a spoken word recording of that poem uh, that you can find on the Fledge website. They call me a small farmer. And I've got a big list of to-dos. Feed the world, cool the planet, try walking just one day in my shoes. Because I've got the fractured food system blues. Where are food policy councils? Now, how do you put that in a song? People's voices and ideas that make decision-making strong. But hey, inclusive governance mechanisms will never make the news. We've got the fractured food system blues. There are many wonderful memories from Fledge. One of my favorites is the Agricultural Field School and Research Summit that we held in the summer of 2018, which brought together farmers, harvesters, indigenous communities and researchers and nonprofit organizations to really think about how agroecology and food sovereignty could be forwarded here in Canada. Uh, it was a wonderful learning experience and a real celebration of the excellent work that we had been doing through Fledge. One of the highlights for Fledge for me was working with the international advisory team. Uh, one of the, those experiences was working closely with Dr. Jill Clark from Ohio State University. Uh, she and I started an edited book project early in the Fledge process, uh, and eventually Ch Dr. Charles Levko and Dr. Kristen Lowett came on board, and the four of us edited a volume on innovations in food system governance. Uh, that project then uh, got me connected with Dr. Sean Connolly from the University of Otago in New Zealand. And uh, just over this last year, I spent some of my sabbatical uh, researching the dairy sector in New Zealand's response to the challenge to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And there's a very interesting story there about how that sector is uh, responding to that challenge, given their country has committed to zero carbon by 2050 and uh, greenhouse gases out of agriculture, about half of uh, what the country produces in GHGs. Early on in my PhD, I participated in a Fledge digital storytelling workshop, which gave me the opportunity to really explore my previous work in new ways and to engage with the work that others in the Fledge network were doing as well. And during that three-day workshop, we talked, we laughed, we cried, we were frustrated, we were excited, uh, and we were energized by each other and the stories that we were sharing. So all of the videos that we did in the digital storytelling workshop can be found on the Fledge website under resources and food connect. I intend to go on working on sustainable food systems and I'm looking forward for the next iteration of Fledge. Thank you.
I'm really thankful for the experiences gained and for the friendships and collaborations that came out of my time with Fledge. And I'm excited to see where the project goes from here. Thank you. I'm really, really excited to do this work uh, and excited to keep sharing with the Fledge Network and learning from everyone who's a part of this resource sharing. So very, very grateful for these opportunities and um, yeah, looking forward to it. I can say that they've really enriched the discourse in food and food policy in Canada. Uh, many of them produced this book, Nourishing Communities, and I do feel that because of Fledge, we are better nourished to think about what kind of food systems we need. I'm looking forward to see where this work is going to take us when the Fledge project is officially over. I can see a number of different collaborations developing from here, and it's going to be fun to see where that journey goes from here. For me, this has been a super rewarding uh, super uh, productive project and I really look forward to working with all of my Fledge colleagues and community partners in wherever this work takes us next. So I think I'm increasingly committed to move to moving from exploring that in research to hopefully doing it in practice. Some of the legacy of Fledge for our community partners in the Northwest Territories um, you can actually see when you go to these communities, right? Like, so Kakisa is a really great example of the impact that Fledge has had is, you know, you can see the gardens, you can see the waste management pro projects. And, you know, we're very proud of that, uh, those achievements and the community is very proud of it too. And it's just spun off uh, into more projects and just better relationships. And uh, it's really, yeah, it was really that, that kind of spark that, that uh, you, you know, these research partnerships just, just needed to get going. Fledge has really been a, a launching board for us to develop important and innovative networks with colleagues, uh, some of whom we can now call friends, I think, um, that we will continue to work with for years into the future. It's been incredibly heartening to find uh, this extended Fledge family of, of friends and colleagues uh, with whom I share core values, and I'm really grateful to have been a part of it. Just the community-based work that's happening uh, throughout Fledge is really incredible and I'm so privileged to be a part of it. I think that's at the essence of what uh, it is, uh, what, what Fledge is all about. And it's been an amazing, amazing uh, journey and I've learned so much and made so many wonderful friends and I'm really grateful to have had this opportunity.